Hello everyone, we have a four leaf flower right here. As you can see there are four leaves that's given by this polar equation, r equals two cosine two theta. And our goal here this time is to find the area of just one petal of this flowers, which is just one leaf right here. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, to do this, we are going to consider um, the boundary because we cannot just go from zero to two pi, right? And so what we need to do here is that we can um, just consider how we can actually trace out the curve from just this portion right here. And then you may say, what about the other portion? We can actually take advantage of symmetry so that we only need to worry about just half of a leaf right here. Okay, so what are we doing? Uh, first, we need to plug in some data values to see what's going on, okay? So first, um, when theta is equal to zero, what happens? We have r is equal to two cosine of two times zero, okay? So what is uh, cosine of zero? That's one, so you're gonna get r equals two. And that's actually just at this point right here because the angle is at zero, right? And then r is equal to two, so that's two units away from the origin. So this is when theta is equal to zero. Okay, now as we trace out the graph by increasing theta, what happened is that we need to figure out when we get back to zero. When is the first time that we're getting back to zero? So um, let's think about where that is. Okay, so what we are doing here is that we need to, um, we can try setting this equation equal to zero so that r is equal to zero so that we get back to the origin, okay? So what do we do here? We are going to set, let's do it yeah, in the same color here. We are going to set um, the r equal to zero. Then we are getting zero equals two cosine two theta. And then we actually don't need the two in front of the cosine, so we can divide both sides by two. So we are gonna get zero equals cosine of two theta. And then our goal here is to solve this simple trick equation for data, okay? And then um, how do we do that? First, we need to uh, think about what angle that we plug into two, to data that will make two data um, an angle that we plug into cosine that will give us zero. Okay, that sounds too complicated, right? Let me just put it in a different way. Um, if we treat this two data as one single angle, we need to figure out what do we need to, what we plug into cosine, it will, we will get zero. And that actually would be simple right here. Um, the angle that we should be getting, right? That's when cosine is equal to zero. It's when we have um, pi over two and then three pi over two, five pi over two, and so on, right? There is also um, angles in the negative direction, but we are not going to worry about that here because we're interested in finding an angle that's greater than zero, okay? So <clears throat> we are going to just consider all the positive angles right here. And then we are gonna divide by two. So when we divide by two, we are gonna get data to be pi over four, three pi over four, and then five pi over four and so on, right? Now, as we are tracing out the graph, we actually want the really first angle that will lead us back to uh, zero, the origin, right? So it would be this angle right here. It would be this one that we want. We want this one. Why? Because as you are tracing out the curve, starting from the point at two zero, right? And then the first time that you are going to hit zero right here, it's going to be this angle that will give us this angle. So eventually we are going to get back to this point right here. That's when you have what? That's when data is equal to pi over four. Okay, so if you actually starting from here, if you start from, um, let me draw more details right here. Yeah, this is actually 
this rate is actually data equals zero right here as you sweep out in this direction. Right? Do you see what's going on here? We actually will trace out the curve. It's given by this function right here as we increase from data equals zero to data equals pi alpha four. So all we need to do, if we are to find the area of this region, just the, um, the area for half of the petal, right? Then we only need to integrate from zero to pi alpha four. So that's how we figure out um, the interval for the integration. Okay, now let's set up the integral. So the area, is actually given by the integral from a to b, right? One over two r square, and then d data here. And so let's fill in the details right now. The integral is actually going from zero, okay? So zero right here. And then um, the upper limit would just be what? Pi over four, okay? Yeah, so this area right here, it's actually the area for just this region. This is the shaded region. Yeah, so this is the area for the shaded region. Um, well, they're both shaded region right here. I should actually just label in a different way. So that region, it's actually, let's just call it A. So we have the A here. But the total area, it's actually just multiplying the A by two so that we can get the area for one petal of the flower. Okay, now, um, let's continue with setting up the integral here. We have the one half. The rest is mostly just routine work. So we are going to just plug in, uh, what is that? That's two cosine of two data. Yeah, so, so we plug this two cosine two data into this R here. And then don't forget that there is a square on the outside and then D data. Yeah, so that's our integral. And then going from here, we can actually move the one half outside and then we can also square, right? So we can do that. So we have one over two to grow from zero to pi over four. And then there was a four cosine square two data. And then you can actually move the four outside that will be multiplied with a one half. So you're going to get two. Actually, I think I can do it here. It will be two, zero to pi over four, and then we have the cosine square of two data. Now this cosine square right here will require us to use the half angle formula so that we can actually do what? We can actually convert it into a different expression that we can integrate directly. So let's just recall that. Let's just recall that right here. The half angle formula, it's going to be cosine square, okay, of x is equal to one half, and then we are going to get what? One plus cosine of two x. And so I think I should do some highlighting right here, the two x. Actually, I should just do just highlight the x. I think that will be enough. So 2x, right? And you see what's going on here? Um, when we do the conversion, if we have x right here, what happens is that after we turn cosine squared into this expression, we are going to get 2x inside the cosine function. So if we initially have two data, which is just the same thing as the x right here, you actually need to replace the x by the two data. So you can see that there are two twos in there. And so when we apply the formula, we are gonna get what? We are going to get one over two, and then one plus, now cosine of, now remember that this, the x is actually this two data right here. Okay, so you gotta replace this x by two data. So we are gonna replace this x by two data. So we are going to be getting two, which comes from the original formula. And then the x is also just what, two data right here. So you are going to be getting four data.
the next step I can actually <clears throat> take the two times the one half it will just cancel each other out right so we are going to get the integral from 0 to pi over 4 integrating the 1 plus cosine of uh, 4 data And then now the rest is really, really straightforward integration. So we are going to be getting data right here when we integrate the one. And then we integrate the cosine of four data, which is um, sine of four data here. Don't forget to reverse the chain rule. We need to multiply by the coefficient of the data, which is one over four. Right? The co um, the reciprocal, right, of the coefficient. And so the coefficient is 4, so the reciprocal is 1 over 4. And then you are evaluating from 0 to pi over 4. We could have um, make the lower limit leg the pi over 4, and then we can actually have the whole paddle. Yeah, but it's easier to plug in the 0. So plug in the pi over 4, you are going to get pi over 4. Um, plugging the power of 4 into this 4 data right here, you are going to get 4 times what? You are actually going to be getting what? 4 times pi over 4 when you plug that in here. You see what's going on here? The 4s will get cancelled. Then you're actually just getting sine of pi. Sine of pi is 0, so we don't need to worry about it. Right? And then um, I can still put that here, but sometimes it's really just... We're just getting four times the what the pi over four. Yeah, but this thing it's going to become zero. And then next, when you plug in the zero in there, you gotta subtract the zero plus one over four when you plug in the zero in there, which is still just zero, and all that will also become zero. And so we just have pi over four, but remember we only find the answer as what half of the leaf, right? So now what is the total area? What is the total area for, um, so the area for of one petal, right? Is equal to what? Is equal to twice the the area the area a right? So you do two times the pi over four, which is something that we got right here, and so the final answer will just be what pi over two, and that's our final answer. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like my video, please check out my other videos and also please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like and leave me a comment. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.